unfortunately, as you know, the company is in active litigation. So even though the judge has sided with Aereo twice, the two times it's come in front of them, I can't really comment on the company. Right okay, now. so we will move on then to the dorm room fund. So we know that you've been going and looking basically younger and younger. You started your first company from a dorm room, so it makes sense that you know this happens. What is about the changing of the landscape now that demands that as an investor, you start reaching out to people earlier? Well, over the last 10 to 12 years, we've seen an incredible shift in the cost and complexity of starting companies. It's come way down. We're seeing a democratization of entrepreneurship. Any student could, could start developing code and get it in the Apple App Store or on Facebook or on the internet so much cheaper and so much faster. So while the technology barriers have come down, the financing barriers haven't. There's no good way for kids to get money for their companies and stay in school. Josh, well, that's the last point, and stay in school, because we've heard from Peter Thiel, for example, who says, I'm actually going to pay you not to go to school. I imagine more deans are happy with your plan. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, well, well, while there are clearly successful college dropouts who have gone on and created really big companies, I'm not sure that's the path for everyone. And what the Dorm Room Fund does is that it, it, we give money now on three campuses. We're in Philadelphia, on Penn and Drexel. We're in New York at NYU, um, Columbia, Princeton, and Cornell now. And, we t and tomorrow we're going to be opening up in San Francisco at Berkeley and at Stanford. And what these do is we, g we, pick, we give 10 to 11 students, make them venture capitalists, give them half a million dollars to invest, and they invest in their peers, about $20,000 at a, a time. All right, now Josh, how do you pick the student VCs, so to speak? So it, the, the response has been incredible. When we, when we did it on Penn's campus, for example, over 700 students expressed interest for those, 11, for those 11 spots. And what we're looking for is a diversity of interests and experiences. We picked, MI, uh, un, uh, we picked graduates and undergraduates. We picked engineering and Wharton. We picked people that have experienced starting companies and people that might have interned at venture firms. Just a, a wide group of, of people that are primarily really interested and understand and passionate about the power of technology to create businesses and change the world. And what is the hit ratio that that's important to you because as cool as this all is, I mean, it's a money-making enterprise for first rounds. Yes, this is not a sponsorship. This is not an advertising deal. This is an investment. Um, what we're hoping for, though, is that, that the ROI here will be judged a little differently. When we fund a company, we expect a return on that company. When we fund a founder in school, we're hoping that that helps us sort of build a relationship, helps the dorm room fund build a relationship, and, and we might get returns in a lot of different ways. Okay, and as far as the kinds of businesses that you're interested in backing when you work with the student VCs do you tell them this is the kind of business that we're interested in or do you it's just let them fly it's really up to them obviously we're looking you know chances are with twenty thousand dollars you're going to be funding capital efficient companies so that tends to bias towards IT or internet but we really don't put that many restrictions on the students we let the students make those decisions okay so and as you mentioned as well there's an expansion plan do you have even more cities lined up that you're thinking about right now so this school year if we could if we could sort of we, we've launched in Philadelphia and they've already committed to six companies in the last four months we just launched in New York a few weeks ago and, and announced the, the 11 students and now we're recruiting students starting tomorrow for San Francisco and, and though that's our that's our focus for this school year we are we're hoping that if this continues to succeed we're going to continue to expand and we've looked at we're looking at areas whether it's Chicago Boston Austin or other markets well there's more and more tech hubs popping up so that makes sense as far as the ideas that you're looking at at first round so turning the page moving away from the students and the kinds of projects that you're flying around the world basically all the time to to meet with investors to meet with uh, entrepreneurs what are you focused on now so we're not thematic based investors we're not sure that we could pick the exact right idea. Instead, there are a few general areas that we're looking at. One is sort of the, the, the virtualization of labor, how it used to be that you got a job and that's how you got paid, and now sort of employment is being redefined. Does Uber redefine employment? Well, you have thousands of new entrepreneurs who have purchased cars and are out there driving their own businesses. You look at companies like TaskRabbit, who are virtualizing labor. Companies like Dog Vacay, where all of a sudden this multi-billion dollar sort of pet sitting industry, you now have people that are boarding uh, pets in their home. These are all examples of businesses that are sort of disrupting the, 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 the conventional notion of, of what labor is. And even with dog vacay, it's a great example because this is not a particularly high-tech business. It's just using technology to organize a service that many people need. That's exactly right. You know, you know, 
you're, you're finding that technology could break down barriers. When I started my first company, I paid $10,000 to a, a marketing firm to, to build a brand identity and a logo. Now you have companies that are just going online, whether it's Logo Tournament or 99design, neither of which are our portfolio, but our portfolio used, and they're getting logos designed for 300 bucks. Speaking of portfolios, I have to ask you as well about Funders Club, because this is something else you're working on. What is it? How is it helping first round? So Funders Club is really one of the first active uh, online venture funds. And what they've done is they're trying to democratize funding of startups. So historically, uh, angel investors, it's a tough asset class to sort of for someone that might not be in the deal flow to get connected with. And it's tough for companies because they don't want to have to deal with hundreds of, of different investors. So Funders Club has gone out and now funded 20 different companies. And what they do is they allow accredited investors to go online, learn about these companies, and write checks as small as 1000 or $5,000 to invest. Whereas previously, the friction of, of being an angel investor, you had to write 50 or $100,000 checks to, to invest. Although I guess it's worth making the point, even if you write a check for 1000 or for $5,000, normally you will be asked to follow up or, or else you just end up getting diluted and, and placed out at some point. Yeah, for, venture, for venture investors, that's the case. Oftentimes, companies make exceptions for small angel investors so they don't actually, they don't actually have to follow up.